Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to look at large worlds. Now, for large worlds, um, the grids can become a challenge. The larger a grid becomes, the more memory it uses, and at some point, it simply uses so much memory that it is no longer viable to just have one grid in your scene. Now, um, how big uh, a grid, or sorry, a world needs to be in order to be considered large? Um, well, I mean, we can't really tell you that, but in this case, as you can see, we have a 500 by 500 world. Uh, I would say this is probably in the yellow zone. Uh, it is starting to get a little too big uh, for one grid solutions to uh, be viable. Um, it is a possibility, as you can see, we have a grid here, um, and that would work, but it will still take quite a while uh, for it um, to initialize. Um, baking of the grid will take something like 20 seconds uh, and it will take a similar amount of time to initialize upon game start. So um, this is probably not what you want. Um, you will probably want a faster startup time and also you will probably um, be more happy to avoid the memory footprint of a very large grid. Also the larger the grid the slower the pathfinding. So for large worlds, um, it is a much better idea to simply split up and use multiple uh, grids that you stitch together using portals. And then you simply activate only the grids that are around the area where the action takes place. Every other grid will be disabled. Now the enabling and disabling of these grids is something you will have to control yourself from your game logic. Um, but creating a grid field is something that we've added a new tool that can help you do. So the first step to uh, get started with this is that we're just going to remove this one solo grid that we had and then instead we're going to create a field of grids. Now we have added a tool to make this this much easier. Uh, as a manual task it can take quite a while. Um, so what we've done is we've created this uh, small tool. As you can see it consists of basically all the properties that also exists on a grid. Um, these are the default options that will be given, given to each of uh, the grids in the grid field. And then we have options of how many grids we want on each of the axes. The default being 4x4 four four, uh, for a total of 16 grids. So if I was to just create this field here, as you can see it will create a small um, field of 16 grids with 10x10 10 10 grids in um, the field. So this doesn't really work for this world, this is far too small. So um, instead, if I want to fill out my entire game world, I'm going to say that 50 by 50 will be suitable for my game, and then I will have 5 on each side to fill the entire world. And now I can create my field, and as you can see we now have 25 grids side by side, 50 by 50 each. Um, by default, each of these grids are now um, ha ha has had their uh, automatic initialization disabled. So, when you have uh, these types of grids, you would need to enable or initialize these grids through code. Uh, simply uh, determine where action takes place and initialize those grids, and then leave the rest disabled. And then you will have to swap between disabling and en and enabling different grids. Now that's basically all there is to it. This is how you can create grid fields. Now there's one small um, thing you should know about navigating between these stitched together grids. If you create them small enough that you would write, uh, want your units to actually navigate across multiple grids, instead of just from one to its neighbor, if you actually want your units to be able to travel across multiple grids in just one go, what you should do is you should check off this prevent off-grid navigation on your unit. Um, this will allow, this will make it use portals uh, instead of trying to use off-grid navigation when uh, traveling between the different grids. Alright, I hope that makes sense. See you in the next video.